hello friends welcome back to ccsp certified channel today i'm going to cover intellectual property rights which is topic 4 of important laws in standard if you are new to my channel i would like to inform that i have already covered four topics before this first one was uh, cryptography and uses of cryptography in securing cloud second was identity access management third was cloud characteristics fourth was risk in the cloud and this one uh, fifth one going over is a important laws and standards so i already cover over 70 percent syllabus in this video series so many candidate asked me what is my vision for this video series so i started this series a year before and i want free and comprehensive studies on the ccsp by this video series by covering high probability exam topics difficult exam concept because soundness of concept is very important to clear any of the IC score exam especially CCSP my important one of the important source of my study is candidate feedback memory based collection because I do conduct batches also apart from this I refer CCSP question bank and sample question bank so I will try to use my vast IT knowledge over 14 years CCSP exam learnings and other cloud certification knowledge to make things simple and easy for you my goal is to help you get further and faster in your CCSP exam preparation so currently my channel is uh, CCSP specific but this concept are beneficial in other IC score exams too like CCSP, CISSP, CISM, CISA and I have received feedback from many candidates who has cleared uh, exam by watching my videos you can refer my LinkedIn page for their feedbacks. I quickly cover the uh, batch I'm going to start. A next batch, which is a weekday batch from 15 November onward, it may go till 20th of December. It will be four days a week, morning time 8 a.m. to 9:15 a.m. IST. As for working professional, I do provide classroom recordings in case you miss it. Also, I have a success ratio ratio is 100% so far. You can refer my LinkedIn profile. One of the candidate has cleared this week only, uh, Pritam Panda, whose feedback I have shared on my LinkedIn. Also, many candidates ask, uh, do we need to join these classes or any other teacher classes? I, I would say that no. The YouTube study is sufficient and free. But if you are looking for more thorough, effective approach that has worked for me and my candidate, you may join my regular batches or purchase self-paced recordings. An important source of my teaching is my candidate feedback. I revise my content and my teaching style based on the fun feedback I receive from my candidates based on the questions they get. And uh, as I mentioned before, also uh, many of the candidates has qualified based on the self-paced training also or recording also. One of them is uh, feedback is being shared this week. So you can refer my LinkedIn page. I will share my LinkedIn URL also in the description of this video. So if you're interested for any of the regular batches or uh, self-paced training, or if you have any query, you can write me at the CCSP certified at the gmail.com or WhatsApp me on this number 837-008-1064. So we quickly cover the peace of mind activity and we'll jump to the topic of the day. So it is a promotional activity by IC Square. And according to this, you can purchase to uh, attempt by providing some nominal fees so sometimes they don't charge fees at all so this time they are charging 199 dollar above the 599 dollar but i still suggest to go with this offer whenever you write the exam it give you the relaxation because you go in uh, with the peace of mind exam uh, mindset in the exam and you qualify in the first time only so for is that if you purchase a voucher by 31st october and seed by seed exam by 31st October, you will get a free second attempt by December 15. Uh, every month offer change, check for the latest offer when you go for this offer. So topics I will cover today is intellectual property right, a digital millennium copyright act and economic espionage act. These three are important topics we'll cover today. And they are not only important for CCSP, for CICSP also. You can expect a couple of questions from this uh, topic or this PPT today. So intellectual property rights is, is a creation of the mind or intangible assets. So none of the assets are in the tangible uh, form. They are uh, intangible assets 
and the four categories is copyright, patent, trademark and trade secrets. So we'll see what is the difference between the these four. So copyright is original work of authorship like literature, uh, literary work, musical, drama, pictorial work. This is the part of the copyright content and it has been provided by 17 years from the date of the authors. So let's say author uh, is live for 80 years. After this also 70 years uh, post uh, date of the uh, date of the author, this is being applicable. And for corporate, uh, it is a minimum between 95 years from date of the publication or 120 years from date of the creation. So let's say uh, someone has some organization is created today, but uh, publication happened after 50 years. So which is the minimum whether it is 95 years from date of the publications or 120 years from date of creation, whatever minimum the copyright is granted. So let's see in case of there are multiple authors, two or three authors, how this 70 years is being calculated that we have covered in the question answer session. So check that thing before this, what is the 70 years, how the 70 years been counted. One important point is registration of the copyright is not a prerequisite. So creator of the work is automatically protected under Copyright Act from the instant the work is created. Now next is trademark TM. You might have seen this. So this organizes the words, slogan, logos, Nikes, many Amazon, Flipkart. You might have seen. So trademark is against mainly logos we have seen, but it's against slogan words also. It is used to identify a company and its products and services. So it is initially granted for 10 years and renew unlimited unlimited times. Lemon Act is uh, Lemon Act that works associated with the trademarks. So if it comes in the exam somewhere, Lemon Act is associated with the home. It is associated with the trademark. It is being registered at the USPTO, United States Patent and Trade Office, that holds all trademark informations. So who hold copyright information? that will cover in the D Digital Millennium Act that is next to this. But trademark and patents are held by USPTO. There is a concept of burden of proof. So burden of proof, let's say uh, you have seen that uh, your uh, trademark logo is being used by someone else. Then who will f uh, file the case or who has a burden to prove that it is my trademark, it is not someone else. So it is, it is, uh, it is a it is whom who raised complaint of violation. So if my copyright uh, or my trademark is being violated, I have to prove that I hold this. The burden of proof lies on me. Now comes to the patent. Patent is being granted for 20 years. And in the patent, you have to disclose the formula. And even the formula is uh, open, no one can use it without your permission. You have a patented rights, many medicines, many industries use this uh, uh, to patent their novel ideas. And uh, last one is trade secrets. Trade secrets are not being registered with anyone. It is simply like if you don't want to disclose formula, you don't disclose it. Like secret of Coca-Cola, how Coca-Cola create their cold drinks or what is uh, good in the KFCs or McDonald's. A burger so they don't disclose it and that is part of the trade secret so these four are very important copyright trademark and patent and trade secret and we have seen that copyright is from 70 years trademark has a burden of proof concept there is no registration required one good part of trademark is that even though i haven't started using that logos i can still ask for the trademark registration prior so in copyright and others i have to create the content and then only i ask for the uh, rights. So in copyrights, patent, my product is already ready. But let's say I want to use a logo or a slogan and which is not live. Still, I can uh, use, uh, can register that trademark, can raise an application for the trademark. So one question, think about this, we'll cover it in the questions answer session also. If there is no, if I raise for registration, but my I haven't granted yet the registration of the trademark, request can i still use the tm symbol or not against my logo or against my words slogan please think about this we'll cover this in question and session next important is digital millennium copyright act it is more useful in the online copyright work a united state copyright laws and as i informed before also 
US and European laws are very important for exam perspective. They don't uh, care about the other laws, but any laws applicable in the US and U Europe, they are part of CISSP, CCSP exam questions. So, uh, important part of this act is it criminalizes pro production and dis dissemination of the technology, device, and services associated with the copyright works. So it is now a criminal activity. It's not a simple civil case that will be filed against this. Along with the financial penalties, there can be a jail. So it is $1 billion financial penalties and 10 year jails. You don't need to remember this uh, figure. But just to inform you that it is a criminal activity. A civil, a criminal act, criminal case will be filed against you. So we have uh, covered in previous lectures civil uh, laws, criminal laws and other laws so it is lies in the criminal laws category and uh, we have seen that patent and trademarks are held by us pto here same way copyrights are held by us sco us co united uh, state copyright office this is uh, he it is a part of library of congress it is a united state government body that register copyright claims and records and there are some exceptions or there are important points associated with this act one is that non-profit institutions like libraries schools or like youtube channel i'm running they are exempted from these provisions so we are not uh, violating the copyright because we are using for teaching purpose or non-profit purpose then we are not uh, liable for this dmc act we are exempted for this same way it extends the protections to online service providers also which they are not liable for their customers activity like there is an online book reading app they upload a content they ask you whether it is a copyright content or not if you say yes it is they will allow you but they are not liable because customers responsibilities same way let's say facebook you upload a video or upload a photo which is a copyright video someone claims it that it is not facebook responsibility it is your responsibility on youtube you upload a uh, video which is someone else then you are violating the copyright it is not the portal or provider service provider violating the copyright act the next is safeguard against the uh, threat secrets or all this uh, ipr and very very important one question you can expect from this slide and you have to understand this espionage act of 1996 so it makes the theft and misappropriation of the trade secrets a criminal offense it gives the actual to the IPR rights to the trade secret owners. So the trade secrets are not uh, registered anywhere. But let's say a former employees who worked with, with Coca-Cola or McDonald's and uh, he came across these trade secrets, go to the computer and sell it. What is the uh, safeguard for this? So this act is being passed. It is known as Economic Espionage Act of 1996, and it is gives the this is a criminal offense so there are two categories of this when you sell it to outside a foreign country and when you sell it to uh, any other case apart from the foreign countries competitors in both the cases they are varied nature of financial and the uh, jail penalties uh, but we don't go in that de detail we just need to understand the importance of this act is to protect against the trade secret same same way there is one more concept sabotage it is a criminal act of destruction or disruptions committed against an organization by an employee. It's more a revenge activity like someone tried to see that the company going not going to give him hike or going to fire him and then he performs some activity like he disclosed the, some trade secrets of the company that is known as sabotage and uh, uh, the main difference between the espionage and this the espionage requires that information is passed to an outsider that is not in case of the sabotage it may be a public exposure or public disclosure of the information uh, by the employees in the both the cases employees are involved in first cases also employees are involved and they are sharing the trade secret to the competitor if competitor is outside of the country it is a severe crime inside a country it is a crime it's still a crime not as severe as outside of the country foreign countries and in the case of second case it is criminal who uh, it is an employee who is publishing the information outside maybe selling but uh, they are not uh, in the purpose of not earning money there might be some revenge activities or some some prank they are doing because of this this happened and uh, uh, they call under this category there is one more thing very important non-disclosure active 
agreement NDA and CCSP, CISSP create a question and ask the, what is most important to pre protect your trade secret is this or intellectual property rights is NDA. If any employees working on an area where the trade secret knowledge is being shared, there must be a agreement that when an employee left the organization, he cannot disclose this information intentionally or intentionally. So let's say someone is not uh, uh, disclosing the information to harming the company. So they are not filing in the second category. Someone is not selling it. So they are not uh, in the first category, but still they post it on Facebook or they share it to their friend just to, just to uh, uh, in formal, informal ways. This also can uh, harm the company, their secrets can be revealed. So to protect this, NDAs are, must be signed with the employees when they join company and when they left company that it should be reminded that they have filed the NDA agreement and they cannot disclose this uh, information, trade secrets, IPR details to anyone else, uh, formally, informally, willingly, unwillingly and definitely they should be consulted consult with attorney to ensure that the agreement has the maximum period of penalties uh, permitted by the laws. So this is the theory part and you can expect a question at least a question from this will cover what type of question comes and definitely as I informed before also you must have research now uh, what is the 70 years counting start and what is 20 years counting starts. So first question, Ben works for an e-commerce company that recently has some content stolen from another website and republished without the permission. So what type of intellectual property protection would best preserve uh, that uh, other companies which has copyrights violated? So it is uh, definitely a part of the copyright because the content is being stolen which is falling under the copyright category. Next one, if a company want to keep control of a secret as long as possible which type of IPR they should go for so let's say I want to protect my secret as long as possible which type of uh, copyright or which type of IPR I should select so there is a copyright definitely it is for the literary work for trade secret it is either patent or trade secret option as I informed before also the disadvantage of patent is that it is being granted for 20 years and you have to disclose the secret also. So always go with the trade secret option. So in case you don't want to share your secret to anyone, better don't register it under the IPR category. You keep it as a trade secret. Next one very important question. Alex developed a great name for his new product and he plans to uh, to use it immediately he filed the appropriate ap application but want to use it immediately even before it is granted so he has filed the applications to get the uh, trademark and uh, still the trademark is not being issued he want to use it what sh symbol should he use next to his name to indicate its protected status so we have seen that tm is a symbol so definitely uh, at the red C is a copyright sing symbol which is out. P is not a symbol. Maybe think people think that patent has a P symbol. It is not there. There is no symbol like this. We have option like TM at the red R. So TM is only you can use when it is granted to you. So TM is not a right answer for this. So only option le left is uh, R which is right answer. So in case you have filed the trademark but it is not being issued you can still use it with the at the red alls r symbol very important question which i have asked uh, in the starting also so let's say ruth recently obtained a utility patent covering a new invention that she has created how long will she can retain legal protection for her invention so inventions are category categorized under the patent category and we have seen the 20 years the maximum patent can be granted. So how long maximum length they have asked. So option are these two options are available. So these two options are ruled out. Now we read option B and C. So option B say 20 years from the date of the patent is granted and 20 years from the date of the applications. 
so it's very good questions and the answer is 20 years from the date of the applications maybe patent takes couple of years does not matter so the date of the applications 20 years being counted so always remember 20 years is from the date of the applications last and very important question for exam let's say two people leo and max recently co-authored a paper describing a new relatively relativity theory of physics how long will the copyright of their paper last so how long how long this their idea will be protected so first option 70 years after publication 70 year after date of the first author 70 year after last author and 70 year from date of getting copyright protection so we have seen that there is no need to register for copyright the soon you publish it become your copyright content so option d is eliminated we have seen that uh, 70 years from the date of the authors so this first option is also eliminated but if there is a multiple authors we always go with the last author's death so let's say one author died after 30 years one author lived for next 50 more years so 50 plus 70 120 years it will be protected so this is how the protections of the copyright is being given so that's for today hope this is an interesting video you might have found it useful in case it is helped you i request you to like my channel subscribe my channel and share this video to your friends who also get benefited by my video watchings thank you